I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't miss about anything! Not once, not one time! Welcome back to another Hilariosity Review. This is a film I saw recently, and I knew that it had to be talked about on this segment. Uh, it's called uh, Verotica. Verotica. No! No! Verotica is written and directed by Glenn Danzig. Many of you know him as a singer-songwriter, and he's taking his first stab as a filmmaker. He was also the director of photography, and he provided all of the original score. This film debuted at a film festival in Chicago last year, and I started to see a lot of people on Twitter giving reactions to the movie. People talked about the festival experience, the audience watching it, reacting to it, not really knowing what they were getting into and what many people began to easily compare to Tommy Wiseau's The Room. So I instantly put this movie on my watch list. I paid attention to it. I waited for the release. They talked about it coming out last Halloween, but it kept getting pushed back and it kept getting pushed back and it finally dropped on digital recently and I actually bought it on Amazon for $20 which is a crazily absurd price, by the way, especially since the official release on Amazon is not even in the correct aspect ratio. This movie is supposed to look like this, 235. On Amazon, it is stretched all the way to fill the entire screen, and it looks squished and disgusting. This film is inspired by the Verotic Comics label, something that Glenn Danzig owns himself. They are erotic or adult-themed comics. The word violence and erotic has been combined to make verotic, and this film is called Verotica. So it's a movie based off of a heavy metal singer's porn comics. This film is broken up into three half-hour stories, intercut with a woman named Morella, who is sort of like uh, Elvira type, who is introducing these stories while doing really gross, nasty things. The film opens up with her sticking her fingers through a woman's eyeballs and just taking them out. And then she turns to the camera and begins to speak to us after doing this. Welcome, my darklings. My name is Morella, and this is Veronica. I should say that many of the actors in this film are adult porn stars. So naturally, the performances are going to be something wonderful to behold. Let's talk about how this film begins. Immediately, we are greeted with a blowjob scene, similar to any sex scene you may have seen in Tommy Wiseau's film, The Room. And then a makeout scene that lasts for maybe two hours. I think it actually lasts longer than the runtime of the whole fucking movie. But they just keep making out, and he really wants to see this girl's boobs. He keeps trying to lift up her shirt, and she doesn't want him to. Uh, we eventually find out why she doesn't want him to, and unfortunately, due to YouTube's censorship and all that shit, I, I, I can't really show you things, but, uh, she has eyeballs for, for nipples. Her boobs have eyeballs. My friend called them tit eyes. <laughs> Your teeth, they're looking at me! Don't look! Throughout the course of this incredible moment, there's a CGI albino spider crawling up a plant, which, by the way, uh, was credited in the opening credits. The, the person who did the effects which received a, a credit uh, for that, that part. So that's this film. She becomes so sad that this guy saw her eyeball boobs and ran away and she's like, not again. <laughs> so apparently she has a really hard time getting a guy because of um, her eyeball boobs. Okay, so look, this is the first like minute of this movie, guys. I'm talking literally. This is the first fucking minute. And this is where we are. We got the eyeball boobies. Hello? 
Prince Wall? Is that you? That's it? Please, my petite, do not cry. It's not worth it. Now here, it happened again. And it was all going so well. Then he's insensitive, pig. Good riddance. I know. You are right. But he was so cute. They are cute. He will make your eyes puffy for your photo shoot tomorrow. The shoot? I forgot. And these are all like American actors. And. I need to know why. I need, I need to know why. I want someone to tell me why. Why was this done? Why did this happen and why, why? And they also had to learn a French accent. So uh, it's much tougher than you think, especially if you've never spoken French before. So, yeah. so they sat with a dialect coach for weeks you know, learning, learning a dialect, a very serious dialect coach. She, uh, she had a scarf and everything. So yeah, according to this Q and A, they used a professional voice coach to teach these actors how to sound as if they were from France. So pushing the accents and the CGI and all that aside, this is where the film gets even crazier. Her boobs and the eyeballs in her boobs begin to cry. She's so sad that this man has fled because of her eyeball boobies that they cry. And a tear <laughs> from her boobs falls down onto that albino spider. And, and from that, <laughs> how is this ever pitched to someone? You know what? Really quick, I'm going to take a detour. How, you know, when you like have an idea for a movie, maybe you've re you wrote an outline or you wrote a script or something, and it's now ch your, your chance to pitch this to someone for the first time. And you're saying it out loud. And as you say it out loud, you realize there's some problems and you're going to have to fix them. There's some plot holes. Maybe some things don't make sense because for the first time, you're saying it out loud to somebody. Imagine explaining this shit out loud to a financer, someone who's like going to invest in your movie. I need a fucking drink. You know, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to go get a drink. I really am. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm not, I'm seriously not kidding. And I'm not actually even doing this to be funny. This movie, I didn't really enjoy the experience of watching this film. And I really genuinely think that a little whiskey will do me some good. So you guys, uh, if you're watching this with me, you can have a shot too. Ah, now we're talking. So basically after her eyeball boobs cry on this spider, it sprouts into a man, a humanoid spider man with these horrendous, hilarious fake arms. And you can see so many inconsistencies in his costume throughout this movie. There's one point where the crotch area is just fully open, the seam has burst. Maybe he had to go to the bathroom and he said, fuck it, they never even fixed it. Who the hell knows? Set me free, Dashet. Let me be real. But this thing apparently is tied to her dreams in some way. Like if she falls asleep, it can come to life. It can like get people, it can get out into the open. And all it wants to do is kill people 
and I guess rape them. So that's just wonderful, you know? And if these are the fantasies that these comics are about, I just, I don't get it. I really don't. There's no story really to this movie. There's no actual conflict or obstacles for any of the characters. I, I call them characters, but that's a stretch for sure. There's really nothing. There's no good guys, there's no bad guys. There's just people that do things, mostly involving sex and gore. Milk or BR? BR? It, BR, really? I'm gonna go with BR. In my case, I'm gonna have some, some whiskey R. That's, that's, yes. Whiskey R. <laughs> BR. But easily the most horrendous thing about this movie is the editing choices. There are shots that go on for a full 10, 15 seconds longer than they should. You can tell that Danzig is behind the camera just zooming in. The actor has already said their lines and they're just looking off into the distance wondering when the shot's going to cut. They don't know what else to do. They just look so awkward. They have no real direction. You can see it glaringly on the screen. It's so embarrassing. Marielle, please answer. Marielle. Oh no, Marielle. Oh no, Marielle. And every single scene, and when I say every scene, guys, I mean every scene ends in a fade out. Every goddamn scene in this movie ends in a fade out. It's like he had no idea how to make a scene coalesce into another scene. He didn't even understand the concept of stringing a series of scenes together in a way that feels seamless. It's just a moment, fade out. Here's another moment, fade out. Over and over again for 89 long, excruciating fucking minutes. Eventually this albino spider guy starts stalking prostitutes in an alleyway and really lets them know how he feels. He's not subtle at all. First, I wish to bend you over right here and fuck you in the ass. Monsieur is good eyes. As fuck is my speciality. My favorite thing about a lot of these hilariosity movies when there's a bad guy is they always say exactly what they're going to do to their victims. Night Killer had a lot of that. I'm so horny, Mrs. Beck. Like, there was so much of that in that shit fest. But it's here too. The idea that he's just talking about exactly what he wants to do to this woman. It's such a fucking cliche and it's not scary at all. Like it leaves nothing to the imagination. And since they have no idea where to take these characters except for anything involving sex or killing, this lady walks into a sex theater and she just sits down amongst a bunch of dudes who are watching porn and she looks at the screen and she's falling asleep and she just keeps saying, they only make sex. It's just film. It is only people making sex. To only make sex. How wonderful. I just, I need to, I need to know. Why? I, I need to know. So she falls asleep in this theater and the men there um, try to rape her, which is great <sighs> that this is happening again, like the second rape attempt in the movie. Um, and we're only in the first like 20 minutes. 
And when she wakes up and realizes what's happening, she doesn't even try to run away fast or, or fight back. She just kind of goes, no, no, and backs up like a fucking turtle. Like, so goddamn slow. God, I hate this movie. <laughs> the next scene is filled with so many errors of continuity and, and, and plot errors where, where nothing really makes sense. She walks into a cafe because she really needs coffee. And she sits down. And a waiter comes up to her and says, would you like a refill? Madame, Madame, we are closing. Would you like another refill? Madame, hello? Pardon, I was lost in thoughts. No, I'm leaving. She just fucking got there. She hasn't even got a drink yet. Speaking of drinks, it's time, guys. It's time for another one. It really is. It's time. Enjoy. <sighs> Shit. That is good. So Dajette goes back to her apartment, and she's greeted once again by this albino spider guy who tries to kill her. Now, she called the cops because she had a plan. She was going to take some pills and basically kill herself so that this guy who's in her mind, keeping her from not sleeping, I guess, uh, can like be trapped there forever. So she takes the pills, she starts to fall asleep, and here comes the albino spider guy. And now cops come down to break her door and you can tell that they don't even want to wake the neighbors. Let's go. They burst in and immediately tell the guy to take his hands off of her neck, even though he's not even touching her. She's lying on the floor. Don't move, monsieur. Take your hands off of her neck and move away, slowly. Hold it, that's enough. Whatever it is, it is not going anywhere. You bitch! Wake up! I am dying! Wake up! The lines don't even match with what you're watching happen on the screen. The incompetence level. The level of incompetence. Oh, so they fucking kill him and stand over his dead body. And it's like a scene out of Plan 9. She is dead. So young, so sad, weak. But the freak did not kill her. He looks like an overdose. Hmm, so strange. Sergeant, her breast, her eyes. We. Oui. So they sat with a dialect coach for weeks, you know, learning. So the next short film starts, and this one is about a woman who steals people's faces. She cuts off the faces of various people and puts them over her own because she has, like, some scarring. And she has a, a home where she's got their faces nailed to the wall. The only thing in her home is apparently a mirror, a chair, and other people's faces with some fucking candles, because that's the level of production design we're dealing with here. This is clearly ripping off Eyes Without a Face, which is a very famous horror film and a very good horror film. In fact, Danzig likes to pretend like this entire thing is an homage to this movie because he loves it, but it's, it's just a fucking ripoff. Well, if you aren't gonna give it to me, then I'll guess I've just had to take it from you. No! Now look what you made me do. You should have just given it to me when I asked. But while he's paying homage to one of his favorite horror films, he shows his true colors for what he really would like to film, which is strippers. There are three stripper scenes in this 30 minutes. The first one is five straight minutes. 
absolutely nothing happens in this scene. It is just women stripping. That's it. Pole dancing. You'd think, Chris, you know, I mean, you're a red-blooded guy. What's the problem with seeing some pole dancing? I say nothing. It's just that, my God, I'm not going to the strip club. I'm watching a film, one that I wish had some character development or, or really anything of merit happening, besides stripper scenes. obviously inspired by a French black and white movie. In France it's called Les Sons Visage, but here in America it's called The Eyes Without a Face. Woo! And it's basically a doctor whose daughter is horribly disfigured, so he goes around killing women, taking their faces off, and doing face transplants on his daughter, and they never work. And it's a really sad movie because the daughter has to wear a mask her whole life because none of the face transplants ever work. And so um, it's kind of my homage to that French uh, film. But if you thought the cops in the first one were good, the cops in this are so fucking hilarious. It's, it's so cliche. Like everything they say feels ripped out of a 1980s cheesy cop drama. And the placement of CGI with this dead woman's body and the way they're just inserted behind her is absolutely fucking amazing. What do you got? What we got is grizzly, Sarge. Oh, yeah? How grizzly? Pretty grizzly. Face cut off, ear removed, no sign of any other body trauma. Cause of death, apparent shock and loss of blood. Nice. Another sicko killer. Anything else for me? Afraid not, sir. I mean, we, we, we've got nothing. Zero evidence, which means no leads or motive. Where's her face? Well, that's what I was going to get to, is whoever did this just didn't, just left with it. And left no, no trace, nowhere to be found. No blood trail. <sighs> Negatory. There's your motive. They wanted her face. <laughs> This continues the habit of the first, zooming in and zooming out and long pauses without any cuts, extremely awkward dialogue where you can tell the actors don't know what they're supposed to do. They say their line and then almost feel like, oh god, I have to freeze now and, and wait for him to yell cut, but he's not yelling cut, so what the fuck am I supposed to do, god damn it? And there's even more rampant continuity errors, like when she's trying to attack this woman, she has some sort of strange, awkward struggle with her that somehow results in her falling unconscious. No! Ah! Ah! so that she can start cutting her face off. But nothing really happened. They just kind of went like, eh, eh, eh. And she was, <laughs> she was done for the count. For fuck's sake, dude, come on. You'll get it back when I'm done with it. Also, this woman has apparently killed 13 people and stolen their faces, but when you see her wall, there's not even 13 faces. It's so easy, guys. It's so fucking easy to do some of this shit. These are like the easiest of continuity errors, and this movie's filled with them. And the horrific CGI continues as the cop goes to this place called Pussycats and looks at this fucking sign, and he meets somebody who looks like The Rock's homeless second cousin. <laughs> We got another one just like the others. It's pretty gruesome. Brief me. Young woman, her face cut off. No apparent motive, no witnesses, no leads, no evidence. Okay, okay. I get the point. So, how many we got now? This makes 13. All the same. I think it's pretty safe to assume that these were all done by the same killer. You think? We need answers, like, now. Wait till the press gets a hold of this. Oh, that's the last thing we need now. Make sure no important information is leaked, okay? You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm right on it. 
As this cop is looking for this woman who steals faces, known as the Mystery Girl, that's her stripper name, which by the way, he has no real reason for knowing that this girl is the murderer. Somebody at the crime scene found a card for this pussycat's strip club. And now he's there and he's like, I know that it's Mystery Girl, she's our killer. I'm like, how do you fucking know that? You don't know that, there's no evidence. And the fucking lens flares. I mean, people thought J.J. Abrams liked lens flares. Look at this, this isn't even a lens flare. It looks like the lens of the camera isn't even clean. And it's disgustingly dirty. They don't even look like real lens flares. It's like, wipe the goddamn lens, for fuck's sake. Now he's walking through this dark area looking for the mystery girl who comes up behind him and threatens to cut off his face. He's in front of her. He fires multiple shots with his gun. She's behind him. And yet, somehow he hit her. And now, they'll have your face too, you stupid jerk. I would never give up. Go ahead! Run, mystery girl! How far you think you're gonna get with a couple of rounds in you? I'm gonna get you! No matter where you go, no matter where you hide, I'm gonna get you, you sick fuck! You hear? I'm gonna get you! Once again, <laughs> fucking continuity errors. This is, this is, why? After this scene, we cut to six months later and we get yet another stripper scene where the mystery girl has survived. <laughs> That's the end of that one. <sighs> where do you think you're going? No people allowed. There's naked girls back there. Very funny. There are naked girls out here too. It's a strip club. So we're finally at the last one and this one is easily, without a doubt, the worst. They saved the worst for last. This is called Contessa something or other of blood, even though it fades in and out so quickly you can barely read the whole fucking title. And we're instantly greeted with a green screen floor. This woman is walking through some kind of environment, and you can tell that she's done something with blood because, you know, for like three straight minutes she rubs blood all over her face. This entire short, I'm just going to tell you right now, this woman steals the blood of virgins to make herself look forever young. And the entire 30 minutes is nothing but that. There's no conflict. There's no one who stops her from doing this. It's just a long series of this woman rubbing blood all over herself and for like five straight minutes licking another woman. For so fucking long that you can tell Danzig is taking every little bit of potential and stretching it as far as it can possibly go and then stretching it further. Because the actual content of this movie maybe fills up five pages of a screenplay. Five fucking pages. And yet he has stretched it to 89 goddamn minutes. This entire short is nothing but a woman going around and rubbing blood all over herself. And she calls the virgins <laughs> she calls them virgins. So she's a virgin. Yes, Contessa, she's pure, yes. And I'm convinced that the entire budget of this movie went into the horses. Because every time they're on screen, he shows them for as long as he possibly can. He seems to think that like a three minute scene of somebody just walking through the woods saying nothing on a horse is like amazing cinema. And during one scene, a woman is supposed to be restrained by chains, but you can tell that she's just holding on to them. This is the laziest filmmaking, maybe, maybe ever that I have seen in my lifetime. And the blood in this short goes full on anime. You can even see the tube in the woman's neck. And as she grabs her neck, you can see her pushing against the tube so more blood comes out of it. Fucking shameless! The best part of this short is the mirror scene. I almost wanna show it to you uncut. I wish I had the audio of my friend and I watching it for the first time because far into this shot, we began to say, lean in, check the ass, lean in again, and check the ass. 
Because that's all she does for, uh, like, a really fucking long time. This fucking movie has nothing. This is fucking nothing. <laughs> After a trot through an extremely well-lit nighttime forest, she eventually beheads someone, and you get this hilarious fucking head, and uh, she just kind of picks it up and stares at it for a long time, and, and that's literally the end of the movie. I'm serious. That's the fucking end of this movie. <laughs> Nothing really happened, guys. It's like a day in the life of Contessa. She just kind of went around and killed some people and ate their blood. And that's, that's it. So, until next we meet, stay dark. Yep, I'm going to do one more, guys. We're going to do one more shot of whiskey, because this is uh, this is some historic shit. This is easily, without a doubt, the worst horror film I have seen in the past decade. So I'm going to do a full shot. <laughs> yes. That, whew, that was... Ah, I feel better now. Yes. Guys, honestly, if you want to watch Veronica, uh, go for it. I really would not suggest buying it on Amazon since the aspect ratio isn't even correct. When you, when you have a movie that's this bad, where the entire film is, is so incompetent, it's so incredibly apparent that they didn't give a shit because their actual Amazon video of it isn't even properly framed. I mean, how do you charge that much money for such a terrible movie when you can't even present your film properly? That's insane to me. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this hilariosity. I certainly did. If you saw the film, I apologize. If I made you watch the movie, I apologize as well. If you were drinking with me uh, throughout this review, thank you. That was fun. Thanks for joining me. Guys, you are the best. Look forward to more hilariosities very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.